one of my one of my clearest memories from boot camp is actually related to you and, I, okay. and i'm curious if you remember it like i like i remember it. you probably don't but Listen. um we, we were leaving chow one evening and we were about to march back welcome to the military bottom line podcast where we learn from veterans and those currently serving how to make the most out of a military contract. We're here to motivate, inspire, and help you leverage your service to positively impact you professionally, personally, and financially during your military career and beyond. Welcome to episode 44 of the Military Bottom Line podcast. Thanks again for tuning in this week. I've got a special guest 10 years later. (laughs) I just reconnected with my drill instructor, Corey Bromery. Corey's got a crazy story, super motivator, super, you know, excelling in his, in his career in the Marine Corps from when he joined in 2006 to 2014. And, you know, unfortunately hit a a pretty big snag in his career uh, based on something that happened in the drill field. So He's got really a unique story and, uh, you know, one kind of a redemption of him, his career getting just thrown off the rail, um, and, but him ultimately being able to recover it uh, in a different capacity than what he had hoped for, but uh, recovered and rede- redeemed nonetheless. So it was an awesome conversation for me to kind of get an idea of actually who this guy was that was destroying my life for three months. And I know all the guys at 1018, that are our, that are you know on the Facebook group with us are looking forward to hearing this story as well. So I hope you guys enjoy. It. I hope you guys appreciate his perspective, the lessons that he learned through his career, and I, I really hope that you know you guys uh, listen all the way through. And he's got a lot of value to share um, from you know trials that he's gone through. And if you can learn those lessons from somebody else rather than going through them yourself, then um, you're going to do well in life. So. Take this opportunity to learn from his mistakes, his lessons. So I hope you guys enjoy the show. What's going on, Corey? Thanks for joining me tonight. Hey, man. It's good. Uh, like I said, this is crazy. It yeah, is never, crazy, dude. I thought I'd do this, but it's awesome. Glad to be yeah. part of it. Yeah, man. We're, uh, we're, I mean, it's a little bit more significant for me, but uh, 10 years now, I was, uh, yeah. I was one of your recruits down at Paris Island, so... I never thought I would uh, have you on a podcast 10 years later, so it's, <laughs> it's pretty wild. Yeah, you never know, man. Never know. So I uh one of my one of my clearest memories from boot camp is actually related to you. And okay. I and I'm curious if you remember it like I like I remember. It. You probably don't. But Listen. um we, we were leaving Chow one evening and we were about to march back. And I remember you you had a tendency when screaming in recruits face to be uh uh pretty moist <laughs> you would you would you would spit a lot while you were yelling i do it on purpose you know? oh, oh i know i know and uh and i remember we were leaving chow and you were yelling in my face and you were spitting like so much and it, <laughs> it was like it was getting under my skin so bad that i remember trying i was trying to yell like back i sir i sir but i was i was trying to do the same thing and try yeah. to spit in your face in the process mm-hmm. and you like, you know, you went off to do something and then you immediately turned around and came back. And I think it took you a second to realize I was doing it intentionally. And yeah. you're like, oh, you, you think that's funny, birds? And like, again, spitting in my face. Oh, yeah, yeah. I do remember this. Dude, you know, yeah. dude I that was the, that was the only time I cried in boot camp was was marching back. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to die tonight. He's going to kill me. <laughs> this is this is the end of my life. Uh, but I think you, I don't know if you forgot. I don't know. We got busy. But uh, I dodged a bullet, and, and uh, I, that that memory is very much in my head still. I think there's a I think there's a bunch of recruits that dodge a bullet with me sometimes. They get you know <laughs> the drill sort of world gets a little crazy. So yeah, yeah no doubt. So I'm I'm grateful that I got away with that, and uh, you know <laughs> it's all over now. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so definitely over ten years. Yeah, definitely. So, ten years, man. Ten years. Yeah. yeah so uh, 2011, you were uh, platoon 1018. Were you, were you kill hat for me? I, yeah, I was the third hat. So okay, it had uh, Spivey was the heavy, and then Sergeant Jones was the senior. Right? That, yeah, that was a yeah, that was eighteen. That was a yeah. fun cycle, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember it well. Um, so you know, from from the drill, you know, we're gonna touch a lot about your career, but um, yeah. you know, with this interesting dy- dynamic of you being one of my drill instructors, um, 
what like you being the third hat what is that relationship with the recruits you know i don't i don't even remember so exactly. how the drill sort of world kind of works is um the billets are kind of set in place to where like you know the senior everybody calls him dad he he's the platoon he's the platoon commander so if you, if you want to think about it as in uh from an infantry standpoint the yeah. senior's a platoon commander so he just pretty much handles all the admin stuff he's kind of there to make sure that us drill instructors don't overstep our boundaries stuff like that um the heavy which is what spivey was in, in, in you all cycle um he's the guy he's the platoon star he teaches everything mm. he runs the he kind of runs the show um, the third hat is like a squad leader. All right. We're kind of there. Like we still kind of run the show a little bit, but we, we kind of piggyback off the, of the, the heavy. So my job was to make sure that whatever Spivey was teaching that cycle, I was kind of reiterating it. Um, I was kind of learning to become a heavy. And, um, so I got to handle knowledge and stuff like that. So gotcha. and, and at the end of the day, be a kill hat as well. Like I'm the more experienced kill hat. So my job was to kind of teach the, the newer kill hats, which I think y'all had Basantes was there. And um, familiar. yeah, I think he came a little bit later on because at the beginning it was just, I think just us three. Yeah. 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 So, um, and the reason why he, he came off a of quota. So that's why he came a little bit later on. Mm. Um, so yeah, we, we, my role was just kind of disciplinarian at the same time, disciplinarian and yeah. knowledge. That's my, yeah. my big thing. Yeah, you're a good you were you were a good disciplinarian. I remember that. <laughs> Actually, that was that was my that was probably my favorite cycle because I was that was my third cycle and I was just figuring it out. Like, yeah, my first cycle was terrible. I got destroyed. I lost sixty seven mm. pounds my first cycle. Sixty seven pounds. Yes. It was Holy terrible. Smokes. Um, it, it it was just in I a remember, three month I, period. I mean, it, a cycle yeah. is three months, and you lost sixty-seven pounds. Yes, sixty-seven pounds. Speak I on that. Out. Like, how how does that even happen? Because um, when I came through as a new hat, like um, the new hat world was rough. Um, I'm not gonna say as hazing as more of like it was just our seniors then were just expected a lot, um, mm-hmm. and they demanded of us probably more than they demanded of recruits. Mm. because we had to set that example as we continued through our, our, our career as a drill instructor. So I just remember like I, I ate one meal a day and then my one meal was probably a protein bar that I had oh in my, goodness. in my, my um, cargo pocket on the side of my, my trousers. Yeah. And I remember like <clears throat> barely drinking water, running and screaming all day. Like I was, I mean, I know it sounds pretty gross, but like I was bleeding out of my butt literally from just yelling. Like wow. literally, I, would, I would take my Charlie pants off wow. and I would be covered in blood. Hemorrhoids um, just breaking. Just terrible. Unreal. Um, yeah. So I lost 67 pounds. And then we turned around. We had a week. We had a week off and we picked back up the next cycle. And that cycle, then my second cycle, Jones, who was y'all senior, was my heavy then. Yeah. And we were for Staff Sergeant Thomas. And uh that's when it kind of clicked. Like I was like, oh man, this is starting to become easier and easier now because mm-hmm. my body was getting used to it. So I gained more weight back. And then uh, Jones, the one that requested for me to be his third hat for y'all mm-hmm. cycle, because me and him had to kind of build a tight relationship. Yeah. And when he got chose to be a senior, he's like, I want you as my third hat. And um, man, that cycle, y'all, I was on a whole other level in that cycle. <laughs> like, I was like, I thought I was the shit when it came to third hats. And I was like, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a very cocky person, but I know how good I am. Yeah. Y'all got trained. I'm telling y'all right now. <laughs> Me and Jones together, Spivey was very low key, <laughs> which is good. You need that guy. But me and Jones together, when we were heavy in uh, third hats and our the cycle before y'all, yeah. man, we were, yeah, we were vicious, man. You know, so. That's so funny because, like, you know, from our perspective, that 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 is just that's the way every cycle is, you know. Um, so you know, in, in one sense, it's it's good to know that yeah, we were we were trained. You know, from your perspective, you know, you guys like went hard on us. Oh yeah, I think so. And then after that cycle, I went to receiving. I was there receiving for eleven months. Yeah, came back and uh, did one more as a heavy, but I was what's called a lead heavy. So I was like the heavy that was in charge of the entire company. So all okay. the other heavies, kind of, I, I created the, the training plan, everything, and then I became a senior after that. Cool, so, cool. Yeah. So how so how many total cycles? I did seven actually. Seven. Okay. Seven. So awesome, and it's over a three year period. Over three year period, yep, three year period, awesome. So b- before you know, before we could jump into your career, I, there's you know <laughs> we have the uh, the platoon Facebook page, and so I don't yeah. know if you saw, it, but I'm like, all right, what questions should I, should I ask Bromry 
on the uh, on the podcast. And so um, I'm sure like some of them are kind of career oriented. We'll get into it. But yeah. one of them, one of them wants to know if we were really as garbage of a platoon as you guys said. <laughs> Everybody that, that was Redmond. Redmond wanted to know that. I yeah. figured Redmond would ask that because yeah. Redmond, <laughs> Redmond, I do remember <laughs> Redmond. Redmond always had the saddest look on his face every day. Like, uh, yeah, I literally, I literally thought Redmond was going to cry every single second of of boot camp. I um, hope he listens to this. <laughs> yeah, so, but uh, everybody's garbage. It's just, it's a game. Yeah, no, y'all were yeah. not garbage. Um, um, I, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I never judge my, my platoons off their performance, really, to be honest with you. Yeah. I just judge my platoons off the recruits and how they become farther in life. Mm. I think 18 is probably the more, the most active social media platoon that I have. Interesting. Um, that, you know, I think when it comes to Facebook friends of mine, yeah. uh, 18 has, I have the most recruit friends from huh. 18 um, so I think that was cool about y'all is y'all are a little bit more active on social media. Uh, but no, it's everybody's garbage. Everybody's, <laughs> everybody's it's just a garbage. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> is. So awesome. I was, I was told that when I was a recruit, they, they, my, I remember my senior telling us all the time, like y'all are the worst thing ever. Y'all are, I'm like, okay, yeah. whatever, <laughs> whatever. <sir. laughs> so. Yeah. Awesome. All right. The rest of them, you know, that, I think that's one that will, um, Oh, also, Redmond also wants to know if you actually knew how to pronounce uh, Durness. You, 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 you always call him, you call him Durness rather than Durness. Yeah. Dern, yeah. yeah. I, I knew his name was Durns, but I just want to, <laughs> because you just want to like piss people off. So yeah. like the whole, the whole goal was to like, just do something that irritates the recruit because mm-hmm. you, that's the whole purpose. So, you know, I got to push them past their, their mental limitations so if yeah. i can if that was what irritated dern so bad was calling him dernus then i was gonna keep at it you know so oh, you know, I, I knew dern's name but i just yeah it was fun he's calling him dernus like yeah because you can see every time i say it, he gets pissed off i'm like yes yeah. keep getting mad and you have like you have the ability to just keep pushing buttons and like that freedom is yeah. like you know you'll never have that opportunity yeah it's great it's fun <laughs> yeah awesome well the rest of the questions i'm sure we'll cover uh throughout the, yeah. the discussion yeah. so um, you know, obviously, you know, we covered your drill instructor period a little bit, but kind of give us an idea of, uh, you know, you joined the Marine Corps, obviously when, and, and why you yeah. decided to make that leap. I, um, so I always wanted to be in the military. That was always my goal. Uh, I originally wanted to be in the army originally, um, from the childhood, I wanted to be a paratrooper. That was my thing. And, um, uh, I come from a small town, in North Carolina, um, <laughs> excuse me. Um, everybody joins the military from where I'm from. Uh, so I wanted to. And, um, I want to be a paratrooper after high school. I wasn't like really big in ROTC and I was an air force ROTC in high school, but I was really big into it. Um, and I wanted to be an officer originally. So I, I, I ended up after high school, graduated, I moved to Maryland to live with my dad and I found out college was terrible at first. I was like, <laughs> this is not for me. I hate college. This is so dumb. Um, I went to go talk to the army recruiter and he kind of gave me the, the runaround. He's like, Oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, I remember walking out of the recruiting office and the Marine Corps recruiter comes up to me and goes, Hey dude, how interested are you going into the military? I was like, if I can leave tomorrow, I will. And what he's year like, is this? this is Oh six. Oh six. And the army was giving you the runaround. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This is Crazy. in the middle of the surge in Iraq. You know, they needed bodies. Yeah. So, uh, the funny story is, is like a dumbass that I was, he goes, I was like, well, how can, how fast can I get out? He goes, well, we have this thing called open contract, <laughs> there it is, the magic open contract. Right. Yeah. We have this thing called open contract. And uh, if you do this, I can get you to MEPS. Like it was like a Monday I went in. I think it was a Monday or Tuesday. He said, I can get you to MEPS on Friday and I can get you leader shipped out the next week. I was right. like, okay, yeah, let's do it. So at a time I was like, whatever, I'm 19. I'm just, I said, I went in the recruiting office, signed the papers, literally signed an open contract, like an idiot at a time. <laughs> and I went to <laughs> really with the MEPS that Friday, that next Wednesday, I was shipped off to Paris Island. Wow. I get the Paris Island. Um, I was in 3rd Battalion Lima Company, and uh, we were the old 3rd Battalion Barracks. So I don't know if you remember seeing those when you were a recruit, but they're gone now. Like, mm. it's, if you haven't been met at PI, I go there sometimes, they're completely gone. No more 3rd Battalion. It's all new barracks now. Okay. Um, but uh, I was in 3rd Battalion Lima Company, got through boot camp. Um, I was a guide. I thought it was cool as hell. <laughs> I go to get my open contract job. And they tell me, you're going to be a food service specialist. I'm like, oh man, what the hell is this? And they're like, a cook. I'm like, man, you got to be <laughs> effing kidding me. 
Did so, you did you have a, a have like a MOS you were hoping for? Um, not really. I just didn't want to be a food service specialist. Yeah, who does? You know. <laughs> yeah. So I had a very awesome senior drone shutter. His name was mm-hmm. Gunnery Sergeant Rainer. He's retired now. Um, and uh, he comes and talks to me. He goes, "Listen, uh, I know you're a guy. You're awesome. You're doing a great job." He said, "I tell you something. Your contract is like O O X X right now." He's like, "When you get to check in the MCT, there's going to be a, uh, a NCO." Uh, NCOIC of the of the admin the section there, MCT, tell them you want to go infantry. Right now, they're just taking anybody because they need bodies. Mm-hmm. I was like, hell yes, I'll do that. And it worked. I checked in the MCT, went up to the uh, NCOIC, which was like a sergeant, say, hey, I want to go infantry. He looked at me like I was crazy. Huh. He's like, seriously? I'm like, yes, I want to go infantry. He's like, well, you got to sit in camp guard for a week because the next class is to pick up for another week. Yeah. I'm like, cool, I can do that. Yeah. So I wore a little stupid vest and walked around Camp Geiger for a little while. Did the same thing. <laughs> yeah. And then, I picked up, um, went through my first four weeks, you know, the infantry school. And then um, when they did MOS breakdown, I wanted to be a machine gunner originally. And uh, I had really good uh, ASVAB scores and GT scores, which doesn't make sense because they made me a food service specialist. So they looked at me and they're like, no, Bromer, you're going to be a mortarman. I was like, what the hell is a mortarman? They're like, <laughs> you're good at math, right? And I was like, yeah, I'm good at math. And he's like, okay, well, you're going to be a mortarman. So I was like, cool, whatever. I, I'm okay. At that time, I didn't care. I was an O3. I yeah. knew I was like, I'm, I'm happy to be an O3. Definitely. Got through uh, the um, school for, you know, whatever what they call it, the MOS queue for that school. So you went to and, IT, uh, you ended up getting shifted to ITB rather than MCT at that time? Yeah. Infantry so I went to ITB. Down. And then, you know, how ITB is broken down is you got four weeks of basic imagery package, and then you got your four weeks of your MOS package. Yeah. So I did that. And back then, it was crazy. It was like how you see a movie Jarhead. Like, yeah. I don't know how they did it with y'all, but they literally they put us on a bus. They drove us up to Camp Lejeune. Cause we had no other option. You were going mm-hmm. to Lejeune. Like mm-hmm. if you were East coast ITB Marine, you were going to Lejeune. Uh, I remember going, going on a bus, going over Lejeune. They drop us off in the middle of this quad over at one, two. I was in first time, second Marines. They drop us off in the quad and right when they're coming back from a field op, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> All these guys are Nazaria vets or mm-hmm. uh, they, they were in 04 in Iskandaria, which is like a really kinetic area at the time. Yeah. So they're all just the most saltiest infantry guys you can think of. Mm. And they're just standing out on this out, out of their barracks. Just got back from a field op and they're just staring at us. And I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> and I just remember getting off the bus, dropping my stuff, standing in formation. Some like Lance Corporal comes out. I was like, all right, grab your shit. We're going down to the Titan office. Went out of Titan office, did my check-in and all that stuff. And I remember going back to my barracks room and I remember this guy pulled me aside and goes, look out for Private Taylor. I was like, who the hell's Private Taylor? Well, Private Taylor was like a fifth of war Lance Corporal with like three Purple Hearts and oh, a wow. combat action ribbon. And he was just kept getting drunk out in town and get busted mm-hmm. down. He was about six foot four country boy from West Virginia. Dang. And just destroyed my life for like the first year. And <laughs> the first uh, year. Yeah. Man. I mean, I'm in, in the country. I went to country three months later. So three literally, months I went in the fleet. I got, I got wow. dropped off from ITB. Three months later, I was in country. Wow. Um, I got to it was Iraq or Afghanistan, it was Iraq, and that's when it was really heavy in Iraq. You know, yeah. this is yeah. dead in the middle of Bush's surge at the time. It was just, you know, yeah, you were going to see some stuff. Yeah. So I remember I went to my first deployment, um, came back, um, all the senior Marines had left. So it's just a bunch of Lance corporals and they're like, Hey, Brian, you're going to be the mortar section leader. I'm a Lance corporal at the time. Mm. That's the E six billet. They're like, Nope, you're going to be a section leader. You, you're awesome. You've been killing it over there um, in your, your first deployment. I came back, went to infantry mortar leaders course, uh, graduated from that as a Lance Corporal, took my section over, <clears throat> and I get uh, ready for our second deployment to Iraq in 08. And um, I remember getting, I got Meritorious Corporal before I left. And the crazy story about that is I got Meritorious Corporal. A month later, I'm in country. I'm running a whole platoon. I have no platoon wow. commander, nothing. Yeah. I got three, Got 30 Marines under me as a corporal running a mobile assault platoon. You're like 20 years old? Yeah, like 20. Yeah. Unreal. I think I no, just turned 21. Wow. So 21 year old, I've got six vehicles, 30 Marines. I'm running convoy security. I'm running uh, stuff to from back and forth from Lake Thar Thar, where we're at in like northern, like, like kind of central Iraq. Uh, mm-hmm. We were actually on the um, Republican Guard, their actual resort. We stayed on that, which was awesome. I could Bougie. tell you about that all day long. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was running ops back and forth as a corporal. Um, and I remember 
my first owner telling me, he's like, Hey, uh, when you're going to Ramadi today, pick up a generator, uh, while you're there, get some starter shed runs. So I was like, who needs them? And he's like, you need them. I'm like, for what? He's like, you're getting combat meritorious promoted. Wow. I got combat. I was a corporal for two months and got promoted to sergeant. That's legit. Yeah. <laughs> I made sergeant uh, in like, uh, two years and one month. In Marine Corps. Yeah. yeah. That so, doesn't really happen. No. Yeah. And so <laughs> I, I mean, I was like, okay, cool. So I come back, I, I left as a corporal, came back as a sergeant, obviously got back. Um, I was kind of torn on what to do. And, um, mm. I knew I was going to reenlist. That was not a problem. And I remember my first start at the time, his name was first start in Gammon. Uh, he's also retired, been retired for like sure. 10 years. Um, he's got a sweet job. He works at CSX and he's a train conductor now. It's like the coolest thing ever. Hmm. But, uh, anyways, he tells me, he's like, you know, I think you would make a perfect drill instructor and come to find out he was a, a drill instructor. Um, for, he did two tours on, the, on a drill field. And one of them, he was actual schoolhouse instructor for DI school. So he's like, I think you'd be an awesome drill instructor. I think it set you up for your career. And I was very, I've always been very career oriented. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, was well, at that time it was like units were starting to go to Afghanistan, but you didn't know who was going. And, you know, it was like kind of up in the air. And I remember I was like, well, I kind of want to extend with the unit. And so our new battalion commander, I got to talk to him and he's like, Hey, we're not slated to go anywhere, but Okinawa. Mm-hmm. Well, I was like, I'm not going to extend if we're going to go Okinawa. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go to Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, unfortunately I never got a chance to do it. Um, but, uh, I was like, well, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna go to DI school. Well, I put in my package for DI school. They actually deny it and say, Hey, we're going to send you to SOI to be a, a instructor for mortars. Um, mm-hmm. there, we don't have any mortar NCOs. I was like, I don't want to go to SOI and instruct mortars. I want to be a hat. I want to be a drill instructor. Um, so first art game and put in the word for me. Um, I ended up going to DI school with no service stripe. Three, wow. three years, seven months in the Marine Corps. I was in DI know. school. So you weren't even at the point where you had an obligation to do a B billet. No, I just did it because I knew it was going to set me up for my career success. Cool. So at, you, at this point, you know, you reenlisted once or you wait, that was even bef- before you reenlisted. I had just reenlisted. And okay. that was my, that was my reenlistment incentive. Okay. I even get a bonus. I, I, wow. I opted out of a bonus. Wow. Just so you could go to DI school. Unreal. Exactly. And and you had at this point you were thinking twenty years like I'm in it for the long run. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, cool. And um, so I, I get down to DI school in January of two thousand and ten. Yep, two thousand ten, January two thousand ten. Uh, graduated. No, sorry, I got DI school in December of '09. Graduated in the end of January two thousand ten. Mm. And it's DI school was was terrible. It was like being a boot camp all over again. I said worse. <laughs> All the stories you hear about us yelling at trees, that stuff is true. It's, yeah. it's ridiculous. Um, and that's what, I mean, three, three months long? It's 13 weeks. So 13 it's the same weeks. same time frame. But I remember like you'll be in class and literally they're like, okay, you have 10 minutes to be back in the barracks in dress blues, ready for inspection. Go. Wow. The barracks is like a mile. So you're having like sprint back yeah. to the barracks change. And you better hope to God that your blues were inspection ready. <laughs> Yeah. And it's, yeah, no it's random uniforms. And they're like, okay, you go inspection. All right, get back to the classroom. You got 10 minutes to be back to the classroom ready. Man. And like, you couldn't have any wrinkles in your camis, none of that stuff. Like it was insane. Mm-hmm. Um, but I got through it because at my time I was like, I told myself I never will fail a school. So I got through DI school. Um, got signed to first Italian um, Delta company. And then from there, it kind of just, my first cycle was horrible. I remember crying. I cried literally. Like I remember falling asleep in my truck coming from the barracks. I lived in the barracks on base. Yeah. I fell asleep in my truck and it was running and my alarm went off at three o'clock in the morning for me to get up and I was still in my truck sleeping. Oh my goodness. So oh my goodness. You know, people don't realize that they don't yeah. see the, how, like how demanding it is. It's the most demanding thing I've ever done. Did you were at this point, I mean, you were fired up on being a DI. Did you regret it during your first cycle? Were you like, I, why did I do this? Uh, no, I never, I've never been one of those people to regret things. I just kind yeah. of like, you know, I was like, when is it going to get easier? That's my thing. Like, when is it going to get easier? And I knew I've always been that kind of person. Like I've always told myself, things are always going to get easier. Mm-hmm. You, you, you got to learn. This is my learning. My first cycle was my learning process. Okay? Yeah. I'm going to learn. Yeah. Second cycle came. Um, third cycle came. This was y'all cycle. I went to receiving. Uh, kicked ass in receiving. I ended up getting um, drone shutter a quarter for one of those uh, for STC, which was... Um, the support training company. Cool. Uh, I ended up coming back to Delta company. 
I did two more as a heavy. And then I did two as a senior. My, my last cycle as a senior, I had one meritorious staff sergeant. So I was going to be a six year staff sergeant in the infantry, which is unheard of. Yeah. Super unheard three unheard. of those were yeah. meritorious. So I had a hat that worked for me. Um, name was, um, I, I'm not going to say his name. Don't worry about his name. I had a hat that worked for me and um, he had worked for me a cycle before and he had issues, a lot of issues with him and his wife. Hmm. Come to find out, he he kind of just the company was like, "Listen, you need to take a break. We're gonna pull you off the cycle. You're gonna chill." My last senior cycle, um, they come. My first sergeant comes to me at a time, and he's like, "Hey, we're putting this guy back on your your deck. He's gonna be your fourth hat. He's only work for you. You need to train him." I'm like, "Well, first of all, my whole mindset is this: like, you're a sergeant. I'm a sergeant. I don't need to train you. Mm-hmm. You know how to conduct yourself as an NCO." Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Um, Right between my last cycle, between my grass week and firing week, uh, I get a call about a kid that has a burn. Has has a what? Bleach burn. I had a bleach burn. Uh-huh. Um, well, at the time, we didn't know it was a bleach burn. We thought it was like a, you know, how, remember how you used to get rashes all the time? Every crew had like sure. rashes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So at the time, I was like, okay, it was during the summer. I was like, okay, it must be a heat rash. I told my heavy, I was like, listen, just give him some ointment. I had some ointment. And I'll be in the morning. It's like a Sunday. I used to always come in on Sunday mornings because I was single at the time. I didn't have anything else to do. Mm-hmm. I'll let my guys go home because they were all married. So I'm like, hey, I'll come in. Once I get in, I'll look at them, go from there. So I get into the... You were, um, you were a senior, you said? Yeah, I was senior then. Yeah. So I get into uh, the squad bay that morning and uh, I bring the kid up to my deck or to my office. And uh, I tell him, I say, let me see that burn. And he shows me and I was like, man, it doesn't look right. It looked like his skin was like kind of like, you know how you get a burn, you see that kind of white layer of your skin? Yeah. Like that all through his, like right side of his back, all the way down to the bottom of his leg. Dang. I was like, that doesn't look right. Sums up. So I kept prodding the kid. He didn't want to say anything. And I get it. Recruits sometimes don't want to say anything. All right. Um, I was a recruit once. And that's, people, you know, that's why I was like, listen, I was recruited one time. Don't think I didn't feel the same way you felt. But this is not normal. What happened? So anyways, the recruit tells me a story that the drone shutter had put him under the blue laundry bins. I don't remember if you remember those blue laundry bins. Yeah. 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 yeah put, it was ITM in the back after I left that day. Cause I left that Saturday and, um, he had took him to the back cause the heavy was on, on deck, kind of snuck him off, took him to the back of the head. And it's kind of like, it was thrashing his kid and it was pouring bleach underneath him while he was IT him. So they soaked all into his camis and he didn't say anything all day long. Ah. So it just literally melted this kid's skin off. So at the time I, I went to my chain command. I was like, I ran to my, the chief drill instructor and I ran it up and ran it up all the way to the chain till the Colonel knew that night. So that next day, um, my sergeant major comes to me and says, Hey, I'm pulling all your guys off. You're going to be on the, you're going to be on the platoon by yourself. I was like, well, how long? He's like, I don't know until the investigation's over. You're so literally I spent a week wow. by myself. Living, my, basically living at the squad bay. Yeah. Just living there. So, so and anyways, I mean, um, at this point, like recruits, yeah. I mean, you don't tell the recruits, obviously the recruits have no, no idea. I, it's just you don't, you don't. them and dad for the whole week. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. So you don't, you don't tell them. You just kind of, yeah. It's kind of like to figure out ways to play it off. Yeah. So anyways, about a week later, they, my sergeant major calls me from the time he pulls me in his office and he's like, Hey, uh, I need your belt and cover. And I was like, for what? And he's like, the general has the, the investigation now. And she wants to sit you down. And this is when General Reynolds came. So General Reynolds is after General Padilla because y'all had General Padilla at the time. Yeah. So General Reynolds had taken the, the trial. And anyways, they, they take me to court martial. All right. They take me to a general court martial for a conspiracy. Wow. Whatever. So anyways, they go to pre-trial. They throw all my charges out. They knew it was BS. Like I did everything right. You know, I ran, I ran. Yeah. You were going to say something? So, so they're charging you because one of your hats did this? Yeah. So they're trying to say that I taught the drill instructor how to do this. I'm like, oh. I have never done anything like that. Mm. I was like, first of all, I'm not going to tell a hat to do this on my last cycle. I had orders and everything. I had a week before I was going to get pinned on staff. Sorry. You think I'm really going to go yeah. and tell a drill instructor, Hey, go burn this kid with bleach. Yeah. Like it's the dumbest thing ever. Well, the drill instructor tells NCIS that he, nobody told him. So he actually did not say like, he didn't put anything on us. He said, I did everything on my own mm. and they still pushed it. So they, anyways, the, they, they drop all my charges and then they decide to pull a legal IT charge for me from two cycles prior to that. 
Okay. A legal yeah. IT charge. So you, you had been in an incident before for, no, IT? they just went back and started asking recruits from other oh. platoons. What? And one of the recruits happened to say, yeah, he IT this in the head. And wow. so they're like, got him. So then they come in out of nowhere, left field, hit me with this. Well, we got recruits saying that you did, you IT them in the head from platoon 1056 or something like that. I can't remember what platoon it was. Yeah. I'm like, are you serious? It's like three cycles ago. And they're yeah. like, yeah. Nobody so ever asked me. <laughs> yeah. So they end up taking me, continue taking me general court martial. Mm-hmm. They end up finding me guilty at general court martial of, um, um, what was it? Like, I can't remember what article it was, but nothing crazy. It was like um, disobeying the RTO or something. It was just a general order. Uh, uh, but anyways, the, the Lieutenant Colonel who was the, um, judge at the time goes on record and says like, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. You know, this Marine is not getting any punishment. So he gave me no punishment. They didn't take anything from me. He said, I'm not giving him any punishment. The only reason I found him guilty because I had multiple recruits say that they did IT him in the head. You're not and, allowed to IT in the bathroom. Is that- yeah, I guess not. So, oh. and, and so he's like, I'm not punishing this, this Marine. And I'm going to go on record to say that the general was handled this completely wrong. That at most he should get a 6105, which is like a, Slap on the wrist, wrist, pretty much. Yeah. And then give him his belt, give him his meritorious motion, let him go. Well, General wasn't having it. She didn't like it that way. So I sat around Paris Island for a whole nother year. A whole year. Yeah. Not doing, not doing any cycles. Not doing any cycles. Just sitting there. I sat at battalion and didn't do nothing. Oh my gosh. During, during that time, though, it was kind of good because I, I got into CrossFit real big. Um, mm. So I got, I needed it out. I was at the lowest I've ever been. You know, I've never no been. Doubt. I watched my career go from like, literally, I remember the Sergeant Major telling me like, you're going to be the next Sergeant Major in the Marine Corps. He's like, I've never seen anybody fast track like you have. Mm. And I went from the highest to like complete low. I remember walking around Paris on and, and drone starts looking at me like I was some piece of crap. Unreal. I, you know, I mean, like, my, yeah. I mean, like you're, you're facing like potential forced exit from the mm-hmm. military, you know, like what's six years in, you said six yep. years in when you're hoping to do 20. Yep. Unreal. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that would be a very heavy, heavy weight. Yeah, it, it was, it was tough. And it's just like, I, all the hats that I was with Delta company, all my friends that knew, and they were all had my back. They all had to leave, you know, they all had to go yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. So I had nobody, nobody was there. And, um, so you I started were, you going were like out. a, like a, a, um, injured recruit just hanging out there, you know, yeah. like bus. Literally. Ring. I mean, I had I had a soft <laughs> cover on and, wow. you know, you know, the new hats that would come check in. They only, the only thing I knew of me was all oh, here's a, there's that senior that got in trouble, I you know, know. Yeah. And so, um, I remember like, I, I started doing CrossFit I needed it out. And so, uh, I, I met a couple, I met a guy on, who was a Navy corpsman, um, who was working out in the base gym and he's like, Hey, come out down. And I went out in the, the, in the Buford and found CrossFit Buford at the time. And that's where I met my wife. Um, and I knew my wife was going to be the person that I was going to marry because when I told her about my trial, she stuck through the entire time. Mm. Stuck by me, had my back. I was like, "Yeah, this. Even if whatever happens with this, I, I'm staying with this person." Yeah. Luckily for me, I had no punishment. Whatever. I got out in May of 2014, and uh, we lived in an apartment. My wife had luckily just got a job as a nurse. Um, we lived in an apartment in Buford, and um, I was kind of like in and out of jobs. Man, I worked at Best Buy. So, I so at, like, back up before we go too deep. So you, said <laughs> you got out. So, yeah. so you were found guilty and, and basically forced out. So come to find out they Sergeant Major Archie, when I was telling you about earlier. Yeah. He comes to me and tells me, listen, um, I think you just need to take the EAS date that you have originally planned and just mm-hmm. get out. He's like, just EAS. He's like, you're gonna get an honorable discharge, just EAS. Mm-hmm. And it was like a hint. Like he couldn't tell me why, but he said, just do it. Yeah. So I was like, okay, all right, got Sergeant Major, I'll do it. And I knew, I, I knew it was, it was, it was, that was the hardest thing. The hardest day in my life was yeah. he come and told me that. Yeah. So I was like, man, I, I had literally dedicated my entire childhood mm. to joining the military. And I watched my whole entire six years. This at the time it was seven plus years of work and, and dedication to the Marine Corps. Yeah. Completely just saying, I got to get rid of it. I can't but, do it. Again. But you, I mean, at that point you had been like walking around with this weight in your shoulders for a year and a half. Yeah. And you're like, I just want this to be over, you know? Yeah. So. so exactly. And that's what it was. I just want to get it over. So 
I EAS, um, they gave me my DD 214. Um, I didn't know at the time, but I looked, yeah, you know, I didn't know how reenlistment codes work and all that stuff like that. I didn't plan on reenlisting, you know, I, I, I plan on reenlisting and staying in. I didn't plan on like having to get out and so oh, forth. Heck, yeah. But I, I saw honorable discharge. Like, okay. I can, I know I can do something with this. I, I know I have a general court martial on my record, but I know at least I have an honorable discharge. I can do something and I, I was going to find something to do. So I got out and, um, uh, luckily for me, my wife's families, they're locals. My, my father-in-law is the chief of Buford city police, mm. wonderful people. They treat me like their own. And, um, I knew I was gonna get back on my feet, but it was hard. I mean, I worked, I did tree service when I first got out, I was like working mm. with a bunch of ex-cons doing tree service. I went from yeah. this awesome drill instructor back down to just some dude that was just on the side of the road with a, you know, green yeah. shirt on doing tree humbling. work. And then what's that humbling? Yeah. Super humbling. And then, yeah. um, I got a job at Best Buy and was doing like uh, inventory and, you know, just in and out. And so I was like, well, I'm gonna take this honorable discharge. I'm gonna see if I can get into school. Mm. So um, I looked at, uh, I went to TCL, which is the local uh, community college here. And um, I went to talk to them like, Hey, you, well, you have a honorable discharge. So you, you qualify for the GI bill. It's like, cool. So they're like, Hey, the best thing to do right now is just go ahead and get your gen ed classes out of the way. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll file your GI bill and you can get that little stipend, you know, stuff like that. So I I started doing my general ed classes at TCL and, um, trying to talk to my wife. And at this time too, I was also started coaching CrossFit too. I started actually being a coach. Mm. So, um, I was, that was, that was kind of my love. I was like, Hey, you know, I can, I feel like I found a new career. I can, I can build on, um, let me see if I can make, you know, use my, get a college degree in something that might carry over to, uh, the CrossFit Mm. thing. So I was like, um, looking in and out and my wife's like, well, you're good with kids. Um, I see USCB offers a elementary education program. Why don't we go talk to them? And I was like, you know what? You're right. Cause I was running like a, I was doing like a summer camp for kids and stuff like that. Huh. And, uh, yeah, she's like, why don't you go look at that? So we, she went up with me and we went to USCB and I went and talked to the advisor at elementary education program. And they're like, Hey, you know, we would like to have you, you have good grades. So let's, let's talk about transferring. So I did a transfer from, Okay. So at this point you're focusing on like, all right, I gotta like, I gotta make it, make my way in the civilian world. And so you're, yeah. you're trying to figure out like, what is my calling? What's going, what's going to be my career that I, I stick with. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, I, I knew I had to get a career. I can't, I can't yeah. I'm not one of those people like if I'm going to do something like yeah, I, at this time, the military was not even an option for me anymore. Yeah. I think like, my time is done there. I can't dwell on the past. I got to mm-hmm. keep moving forward. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I know the best thing for me right now is get my degree, use my GI bill. And so, um, I ended up getting to the education program at USCB. Um, I ended up joining a, um, also a minority male scholarship program for educators called the calling Mr. Program. I started getting really heavily involved in them. Um, so from there, that was kind of like my brotherhood again, like having a bunch of guys that had my back and, you know, we went to like different schools and worked with, you know, underprivileged, um, kids, especially male kids. Cause they need to see a male role model. Yeah. And, um, I was like, man, this is it. This is my new career. You know, I love, I love this. So I ended up becoming the president of the calling Mr. Chapter. Um, they kind of gave me a scholarship to help pay for a little bit more of my college. Cause my GI bill ended up running out just cause there's so much involved in, wow. in the education program. Um, but I remember graduating, uh, I graduated in, God, it's been forever, uh, 2017. Um, so I graduated in 2017, eight, no, 18, sorry, 2018. I graduated with my bachelor's in elementary education. Um, and I had a minor in, in mathematics. Um, and so from there, I, I ended up doing an internship at a, a Buford Elementary and I got hired. Mm. And um, during this time, too, when I, when I was doing my internship, that's when I started realizing, hey, you know, something's not right with my background. You know, I was like, how am I getting approved by the school district? How am I getting approved by the state to teach? And I apparently have a felony, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause a, a, a court martial discharge is basically makes yeah. you a felon, which is like all kinds of doors close. Yeah. Right so I was like, this is something's not right. So anyways, that's when I said that we, during this whole, let me kind of go back during this whole time in the school, me and my wife opened our gym. We have now. CrossFit Humidity. Awesome. Um, I had a couple of money saved up and we opened the gym and the gym started blowing up, man. I got, I have 150 members now. So, Dang. I mean, yeah. Good for you. Uh, so 
during that time, that's when I had Lieutenant Colonel Posey come and she was um, now Colonel Posey. She's um, she was one of my members and I started telling her my story and she's like, I want to do some digging. Something's not right. So she goes to do some digging and she comes back and tells me, she's like, dude, you have nothing on your record. Hmm. I was like, really? She goes, I think the general, because she has to sign off on the final disposition, right? Yeah. I think what they think what happened was she took it and to kind of cover her face, she kind of just slid it under her door. Hmm. So my general court martial never technically hit my record ever. Wow. So, but, so that, and that's why you were kind of like, Hey, take the EAS so we can just kind of yeah. make this thing disappear. Yes, it, exactly. Wow. So, wow. um, at that time I was like, you know what? I told my wife, I was like, this might be my option to get back in the military. Um, and this I is need what, some f- through four years later. This is four years later. Yeah. Wow. I was like, I need some, I need some redemption. Um, I was like, I, I need something. And I told her, I was like, you know, I don't care if I have to start back over. I need a redemption. Um, mm. So I um, end up going to talk to a Marine Corps recruiter. And he's like, dude, um, you know, I can get you in the reserves, but their nearest unit for your MOS is in like Pennsylvania. Ugh. Like, okay. Yeah, I'm not going to ask. He's like, go talk to the guard. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, go talk to the guard. He's like, dude, I, he even pointed me towards the guard. Like, that's how crazy it was. Yeah. They talked to them. They love prior Marines. They'll hook you up. Mm. I was like, sweet. So I went, <laughs> excuse me. I went and talked to the um, guard recruiter and he was like, yeah, we'd love to have you. He's like, um, you're just meeting that cutoff to where you don't have to go to prior service boot camp. Yeah, you know, talk about that. I was like, thank God. Cause I'm not trying to go to boot camp anymore. He's <laughs> like, uh, and we found you an E5 slot. Cause I got out as a sergeant. He's like, I, I found you an E5 slot for 11 Charlie, which is an 0341 equivalent. Mm. So I found you a shot in, in, in Mount Pleasant, Charleston. He's like, were you down? He's like, all you gotta do is go interview for it. So me, I was like, hell yeah, I'm gonna crush this interview. Like, they're gonna definitely bring me on. Yeah. So I went and just smoked the interview. Luckily for me, the, the start first class I interviewed with is a prior Marine. Okay. Prior Marine infantryman. He's just like, hell yeah, double dog, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so he immediately hit it off. So I was like, yeah, I'm in. So yeah, I, I got in and didn't know I was going to sign a bonus. Got a $20,000 signing bonus. I was like, okay, Dude, cool. The guard throws money at people. It's crazy. Dude, <laughs> did not, re- did not realize it. So got in, in, uh, February of 2018. Mm. And, um, so I got a new job teaching back in the guard. I was like, life's getting so much better. Yeah. So my gym's starting to blow up and, you know, I was like, man, everything started to finally come together. So, um, you know, now I'm, I'm, I, I actually took a new position in school. So I, I'm an eighth grade math teacher at a school called Bridges uh, Preparatory School. Awesome. So I teach, yeah, I teach eighth grade math now. Awesome. So it's kind of crazy going from drill instructor <laughs> and teaching eighth grade math. Uh, you probably don't really, yell at them the same way, huh? <laughs> I try not to. I'm, I'm you know, <laughs> having kids on my own, but, um, you know, I, I kind of want to, you know, talk about the guard. And yeah. I know that's I know to help, you know, with you, cause you know, you want to talk about that. So yeah. I will tell you right now, um, I have, been nothing but pleased with this move to the guard. Mm. Um, I will tell you right now for, I will tell guys all the time. I have a lot of prior, I have a lot of Marines that are still in the area that come to my gym. They ask me about it, man, the guard is a blessing. Mm. And the reason why I say that is you as a Marine, you come with a different mindset. Um, You're just, you just carry yourself different. Um, The day I stepped to my first drill, people knew like they were just automatically like I I treat a drill weekend. Like I'm back on active duty. Mm. I come in fresh haircut, fresh uniform. I don't take shit from anybody. I make corrections. I I come, I came into that unit and just completely changed the face of that unit. Mm. Um, and since being in the guard, I mean, I've been to air assault school, master fitness trainers course, numerous tactics, warfare school. Um, I'm going to mountain warfare school in the fall. Um, my colonel's begging me to go to ranger school. I just don't have time for it to be honest with you. And I'm a whole dude, but I mean, um, as you saw, I don't know if you saw it. I just completed the, the 2021 best warrior competition. Yeah. Somebody asked a question about that. Like, what is that? And I mean, like how did you volunteer for that? Did you get, did you get picked for it? So what they do is the South, the national guards and the army in general is really big on this. Yeah. Their soldier of the year or NCO, they have a soldier in the NCO of the year. How Army does it is the Army is very board driven, um, mm. which I didn't realize. Um, it's a little bit more board driven than the, the Marine Corps. 
Um, and their big thing is in order to pick the top soldier and the top NCO, they do a week long competition and they do it from the battalion level all the way up to the department or army level. Wow. And so, um, I got selected for the brigade competition. And so I went to the brigade competition and I want, so brigade as in regiment level, you know, yep. Yep. speaking of like, trying to compare them both. I went to the brigade competition and like smoke check that like nobody, I knew nobody was going to keep up with me. Mm. And, um, they're like, okay, since you went to the brigade, you represent one of the six commands in the state. We're sending you to the, the, the uh, state best warrior competition. So it's a week long competition and literally outside of drill shutter duty is the most physically demanding week I've had. Wow. And it surprised me because I was thinking, okay, the guards, not, dude, right. we did 12 mile ruck, um, two mile, like we did a three mile combat memory run with like full kit. Um, How long did you have to prepare for this? I mean, was it like, I didn't prepare for it. <laughs> I just literally, I'm not kidding. I, I, I just do CrossFit every day. I've been yeah. doing it consistently for almost eight, nine years now. Wow. Um, everything else when it came to shooting stuff like that, boards, mm -hmm. uniforms, I, that's stuff I carried over from the Marine Corps. Sure. And it's always stuck with me. Sure. So literally I didn't prepare. Um, I just went in there knowing like I went there knowing like, I was like, I'm better than everybody in here mm -hmm. and I'm going to prove it. I don't care how old they are. Mm -hmm. I was the oldest by seven years. And I was Dang. like, because my whole thing is this is the last three years have been a redemption for mm -hmm. me. It's been me trying to prove to everybody. Yeah what the Marine Corps did to me. And it's not, I don't, I have no negative feelings in Marine Corps. Yeah, I was going to say, you, like, it, I mean, I'm sure for a period of time you were pretty disgruntled about it and kind of like, you know, pissed mm -hmm. off about, about it towards the Marine Corps. But I mean, after, after this amount of time, it's kind of like water on the bridge and. Oh yeah. It's, it's, and I love the Marine Corps. Like you can see, like I still yeah. have all my, you know, you can see my wall has all my awards and stuff. Like I still live and breathe the Marine Corps. Like I do. Because it's, I don't, I don't judge the Marine Corps off of one person, yeah. but this has been a redemption for me. And, um, you know, now I, I can't complain anymore because I, you know, I've completely came into the guard and I've, you know, made a name for myself and I continue progressing. I actually pin on at the end of the month. So I finally get that E6 that I've been chasing for 12 <laughs> years. Yeah, I literally finally get that. Um, and which is kind of like, you know, I, the day I get it, I'm not gonna lie, I probably will cry mm -hmm. because it's like for 12 years, I've been chasing a rank that was taken from me. Mm -hmm. uh, and as petty as it sounds in National Guard, like, oh, it's just a National Guard, it still means a lot because yeah. at the end of the day is, is something that was, I've been working for that long to, to get back. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I'm one of those people that things happen for a reason. And, um, you know, I got an awesome wife and two kids and a successful gym. I was gonna say, I mean, yeah. You find your wife through this. You started a successful business through this. Like there seems like there's some significant upsides to that whole, you know, oh, yeah. trial of life. And that's what I tell people. Like, that's one thing I tell guys who are getting out mm. is like, don't fall into that. Don't fall into that pit of I'm out of the Marine Corps. What do I do? Yeah. you got to have a little bit of internal drive and say, listen, yeah. I'm out of the Marine Corps. Either you, you made a decision to get out or not. Like or mm -hmm. somebody made a decision for you things, the things you learn in the Marine Corps can push you in the civilian world. It's all about how much you take in and do it yourself. Yeah. Um, and I will say that, you know, I try to, I don't, I really am. I'm a very humble guy. And I say like this as being humble as possible is I'm a, I think I'm an example of what even at being pushed out and being at the lowest part of your career and maybe yeah. not getting out the way you want to. I'm an example of, perseverance like mm. there's things out here for you yeah. that you can do and i'm not talking about the guard i'm talking about just in general yeah if you use the things you learn in the marine corps in the military whatever branch you're in they we, we, we all have the same basic responsibilities we're all taught the same basic responsibilities we're all taught the same ethos all that mm. take everything you learn from the military whether you like your service or not and use it because yeah. it does matter yeah so, um yeah. yeah and so i can't complain man okay. yeah that's awesome, man. So, I mean, it, it sounds like, so for the first time around, you know, you joined the Marine Corps because you hated college, <laughs> essentially. Uh, were, were you looking for something specific? As in to my college or? Uh, just in like in, were you hoping to get something or achieve something specifically when joining the Marine Corps? 
Because like the second time around, you were looking for redemption, and you. you I think that. I was. I was. You know, like I said, I, I always want to be in the military, so I was just looking for that sense of like belonging. Yeah. You know, I was like, man, the, you know, for me, it's like that. As soon as you put that uniform on, like you belong to mm. something much bigger than you. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's what I wanted to. I wanted to be part of that something that was much bigger than me. And, and it and it made it fulfilled that for you. Yeah, it did. Yeah, and, I, I will say a hundred percent. It still does this day. You know, yeah. even through my kind of like roller coaster. Um, career it's it has you know has fulfilled everything and i want to continue fulfilling more you know yeah so yeah have you found i mean i you know I, i'm always trying to shine light on opportunities and you know i don't want to speak for you so like throughout your career and throughout the, you know that that trial like have you found opportunities that you're grateful for that you didn't know initially about that somebody else could similarly pursue um I think the biggest thing I like when it comes to like something I found within myself Mm. was the opportunity, I guess not the opportunity, but the, the, that personal, like, what am I trying to say? Just that drive to know that things are going to be better at the end. It's, you got to continue pushing forward. Yeah. Um, Life's going to throw curveballs at you. You've got to, you got to take those curveballs and hit them back. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just, it has taught me to persevere. It has taught me to continue pushing and it's given me a purpose to continue pushing now, you know, especially now that I have two children. And it, I think it's mm-hmm. the big thing is like, I can never, you know, if, if my, my daughter or son joined the military and be in that same situation, if, and I hope they never have to go through that same situation, but if they, something like that happens to tell them, listen, I've been through it. Yeah. I know what it takes to get past it yeah. and you got to have that inner drive. So I think that was the biggest thing I took from that was like just developing that humbleness to mm-hmm. say, listen, I don't care how low of a job I'll work. I know it's going to pay off in the long run yeah. and uh, just continue, you know, continue pushing. Yeah. Some guys, some guys get in that little slump and they don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's true. And I mean, you know, it's like nobody wants, <laughs> nobody wants to start yeah. over, you know? Yeah. And, and unfortunately, you know, it, it, it's required of us at times and mm-hmm. you know to go from like you know the top the apex you know you're winning boards you're getting pro- promoted meritoriously to all of a sudden you know this yes. this group this you know the branch the military is like denying you they say you were great but now oh, you suck get out of our face kind of thing uh and i can exactly. only imagine like what that does to you know what that does to you so yeah. um i think that it, that it, feat of turning around and, and like persisting is uh speaks to your character yeah. a lot and that's and that's one thing like i that's one thing i try to say too is like i don't try to shy away from the situation um yeah. you know some guys will i've talked to I've had guys have started with who are first stars now that have brought me on base and mm-hmm. i actually went and talked to the high school about my situation which is kind of crazy mm-hmm. um one of the hats that i that went to the high school with was the first start at the high school and he, he said hey would you like to come in and talk to the guys and to kind of tell them your situation. So wow. I went and actually talked to DI school and said, listen, you know, I told him who I was, told him my story. I don't, because if anything I can do now is kind of guide guys and to say like, listen, here's what things I wish I would have done different mm. um, as a drill instructor, as a young Marine, as a young NCO that hopefully I can give you a little bit of advice and make you a better NCO staff NCO. Yeah shutter so forth so yeah um i'm not one of those guys to shy away from it i definitely will talk about it all day long because i think yeah. hopefully hopefully like doing it right now can help somebody you mm-hmm. know the same situation so yeah yeah i mean you you never know like you know in in life it's always better to learn from somebody else's lessons <laughs> than to go yeah. through those lessons ourselves um so i think any opportunity to to share you know our our stumbling blocks is yeah. you know hopefully going to yeah. benefit somebody else i think so man so that's awesome. Uh, I do want to speak a little bit about, you know, in your comparison, Marine Corps to Army Guard. You know, I know Marines will talk crap all day on the Army, <laughs> yeah. and especially the Army Guard. Um, you know, having lived both lives, what's your experience with it? I will tell you that um, I had that same kind of perception about the guard when I first mm-hmm. signed up. I was like, man, what am I getting myself to? There's a bunch of turds and stuff like that. And trust me, there's a bunch of turds in the guard. Oh yeah. yeah. There's also a bunch of turds in the Marine Corps. You know, yeah. you know that. Yeah. Um so 
I would tell you right now that the, the great thing about the guard is in all honesty, I feel like I have a tighter knit group of guys in the guard than I did when I was in the Marine Corps. Really? Even think the reason why, yeah, because, but I think the reason why is everybody kind of comes from the same area, mm. live close to each other. We, you know, we, we, we go through like, I mean, since I've been in the guard, I've done three hurricane deployments. Uh, I've done DC twice. I was there yeah. for the BLM riots and then recently for the inauguration. Um, and you know, imagine the thing about the guard is like, this is like, you go from sitting on a couch, getting a call at seven thirty at night saying, listen, I need you to have all your shit ready and we're leaving tomorrow. Yeah. Midnight to go to fly to DC. Yeah. You to get up. Yeah. So now you got to put the switch on from like, I go from civilian mode to military. Yeah. Um, do, do you prefer guys that? Are, I mean, do you like that, that like contrast between military and civilian life? I, I like it. Um, it keeps me on, it, it, it keeps me grounded in my civilian world. It mm. keeps me engaged more. It keeps me um, organized more. It keeps me on top of my stuff. Gotcha. So like for me being a school teacher, you have to be super organized like you do. I have lesson plans for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I got to know exactly when to start this class. And when, you know, during the class, I got to know exactly when to start doing something else. Yeah. So having that allows me to stay on top of my civilian job. Um, it's a hard contrast at first coming home, mm. you know, coming back to, you know, two young kids, my wife, and then yeah. my wife's like, you know, going back to her mom mode where she starts yelling at me about something, you know, like <laughs> what wives do, you yeah, know, yeah, nothing, yeah. nothing crazy, but it's like, Woman, I just spent two weeks in DC and yeah. now you're gonna come here and tell me I need to, yeah. you know, fold laundry. It's like, come on, give me a break. But yeah. you know, it's what wives do. <laughs> but that's, I, I think it's the toughest thing. But <laughs> back to like the contrast in the guard is man, I've done I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I've done more stuff in the guard mm. in these three years than I did in my entire career in, in the Marine Corps. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Because you you can create your own, you can kind of create your own self in the guard. You have opportunities that are ridiculous. Yeah. People don't realize that, you know, because I'm in, I'm in the air guard now and uh, it's like, I I just had no idea about really the opportunities that existed within the guard. You know, I kind of just thought that they were like there for like parade traffic, you know, on like July 4th and stuff. But the, the, the number of different mission sets that they do and that you can volunteer for, yeah, you know, and if you don't, you know, if you don't have the time or you don't want to volunteer, then like nine times out of 10, you don't have to, they're not going to make you, you know, it's yeah, just, so, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, and so, so I, I, that's what I was saying, like, you can, I tell guys all the time, like guys that are Marine Corps now, they're at the air station or at PI mm-hmm. told me, I'm like, dude, you can do so much stuff, man. I, I went to Fort Belvoir and like, um, I got the test MVGs for two weeks just to get paid to do that. Sweet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, I went to air assault school. Uh, I'm the, my battalion master fitness trainer. So I got to go to like all these cool courses for that. Like the best wear competition. Yeah. You know, shooting matches. Uh, I mean, it's just so much you can do and people don't realize it. Mm. And uh, surprisingly, we have a lot of prior Marines in, in my, my guard unit. Um, and a lot of uh, prior active duty army guys that get out. So that's the cool thing is you, you get this, you get a, a plethora of guys that are coming from all these different active duty backgrounds, all intermingling. To be honest with you, man, like my motor section yeah. runs smoother than my motor sections in the Marine Corps. <laughs> I mean, dude, I mean, it's ridiculous, but I have a, um, a sergeant that's from 173rd Airborne Brigade that just came off active duty. Mm. I have another guy who's a prior Marine. I have another guy who's prior Ranger back guy. And yeah. it's just like clockwork, man. You know, yeah. on, a, on a gun range, and we're just, yeah, yeah that's awesome. awesome. That is awesome. Uh, Johnson, I don't know if you remember Josh Johnson. He, he yeah. was asking about his, uh, your experience in D.C. So uh, that fool, I tried to go see him because, you know, he was up, he's in the guard. Oh, with like same yeah. unit? He's in uh, Alabama guard. Okay. So we were actually in D.C. together at the same time. He uh, was, I was in the House of Representatives side. And he was on the Senate side of the, uh, of the but because it was how crazy it was, it was hard to kind of move around the whole area. So I never got a chance to go see him, but we talked a bunch. Um, I was like, yeah, yeah. He was in DC the same time as 
myself. So I yeah. try to go see them, but sleep in no those more. parking garages, right? <laughs> yeah, the parking garages were great. I don't know what everybody was talking about. Yeah, I know. Just, uh, you know, the media doing what the media does. But. My, wife's t- my wife called me. She's like, What's, are, y'all, are, y'all, are y'all seeing the parking garage? I'm like, yeah, it's wonderful down here. It's warm <laughs> and there's food, like, all the food you want. Like yeah. who cares? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you were there for two, two weeks, two yeah. separate times. So the first time I went for the BLM riots when that yeah. was, that was a shit show, dude. Yeah. That was, that was crazy. Like I remember we flew from like, literally we, it was like deploying to like a combat zone, man. We flew from Charleston on a C-17 landed at Andrews. And that night I was on a riot line oh like that God. night. Just, yeah. I mean, did you ever, you ever had to fight anybody <laughs> off or was it you guys were just standing in the line, holding the line and in line, people throwing shit at us you know, spitting at us. It was crazy. Unbelievable. Yeah. So that that was, we were only there for like six days, but that was way more, if you want to say kinetic, Yeah, that was way more kinetic than this last one. The Biden thing was just like, sit there and look at the road for two hours. (laughs) Yeah. Half time we were screwing off or just whatever. So were were both of those volunteer only, or did you get, no, I was voluntold. Okay. but you know, that's what I that's signed up to do, right? So Yeah. I mean, I feel like I mean between running your own business, you know, the school thing is a state it's a state job, right? Yeah. It's not a it's yeah. not a private school. So I mean, yeah. you know, the state the state jobs are, are pretty easy to deal with with the guard and reserves. But like running your own business and having to take these orders, I mean, what is that what is that like? That's gotta throw some I have seven coaches. So it actually okay. works out pretty well. Nice. So my wife, um, she's a nurse and she only works, you know, three twelves. And so That's she awesome. schedules her, you know, if I'm gone, she schedules her time. She, she does a lot of coaching and I mean, I don't know how she does it. Two kids and coaches and yeah, yeah. she's, she's a, she's a true champ, dude. Yeah. Straight up. So <laughs> That's awesome. And deals That's with me awesome. at half time. I'm like, man, I don't know how you do it. So. <laughs> um, Ian Schumacher asks about the ups and downs of opening a business uh, or opening a gym and the business on the side. Um, downs there's not much you're gonna put a lot of time in uh i worked like drill shutter hours my first year at opening a business because you know you have an early morning class and you're there all day and you stay at night and you clean and so yeah. you put a lot of hours in um you're not gonna make much money your first couple of years yeah um but ups i mean i met awesome friends i've met friends i've probably had for a lifetime um i've i'm you know able to stay in pretty good shape. Uh, cause you know, on a gym, it's like, yeah. Hey, I can work out all day long. Um, it's just the cool thing of being a business owner, like creating your own schedule, creating your own product. Uh, that would say that's the ups about it. You know, did you're it feel like a brand. gamble when you, when you started it? Or, I mean, did you feel like you were just kind of putting all money on black kind of thing and, and sending it? Or did you mm-hmm. feel like there was, I mean, you did a lot of research to decide. Like, I, did, this is- I, I had, you know, I had kind of been in a gym for about four years. I kind of see how it kind of ran. Yeah. And I, I knew how to do it. So I started out really small and just built. Cool. So cool. Like debt wise, we're not in any debt. <laughs> yeah. We awesome. paid off all that. So huge. Yeah. Huge. So that's um, good. And you did that before you found out that you still had like VA benefits. So there were, you weren't using it. I don't even know if there are yeah. VA programs. They are, there are, there are VA loans, but they're, to be honest with you, they're kind of a pain in the butt mm-hmm. um, to get, um, if you're doing something small business wise, that doesn't cost a lot for a startup. Yeah. In all honesty, you don't need it. If you're looking at something like a hundred thousand dollars plus, then yeah. yeah. Um, but you have to create a business plan and present a business plan and stuff like that. And yeah, but the VA loan, there is a VA business loan. Um, I I do use the VA loan for my house. Sure. So that does benefit a lot because that thing's that's nice. Oh, no yeah. down payment. Oh yeah. Um, but business wise, no, I haven't used any VA benefits for that. Right on. So, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, just scrolling through the the Facebook question, see if anybody has anything we didn't cover. <clears throat> but it looks pretty good. Uh, I I like to close out with some of you know kind of the same questions for everybody to get an idea. Uh, one being, where's the your favorite place that the military has ever sent you? And least favorite, if you want to include that. <laughs> least favorite is Iraq. That was terrible. <laughs> um. You know, in all honesty, uh, I think the my favorite place in military is, and I know it sounds cliche, uh, is here, Buford. It's nice. that's kind of the reason why I stayed, man. This place is awesome. Down mm. outside of being a recruit, it's a beautiful area, man. Yeah. And um, I think it's probably the best place that the military has sent me. Mm. You know? yeah. yeah, awesome, cool. 
what's a you know a piece of advice that you give to somebody else that is considering joining or maybe they're in their career now or or even like facing this you know a, situ- a similar situation of turmoil um you know what kind of wisdom do you have for anyone um i would say for people joining um my big thing is this is is make sure that you take the time to to think about what you're going to do career wise in the military um job wise pick you know be patient, especially in today's world. Don't go open contract. <laughs> don't go open contract. Hell no. Yeah. Um, it's not like it was in 2006. So yeah. don't do that. Um, be patient. Let the, let your, let your job come to you, you know, um, you know, and once you get into the military, you know, look at what, give your, you know, look at what you need to do to progress. Uh, I was very big on that. So yeah, look at things that you need to do on your own to help yourself progress. Um, you know, so that's my big thing. Uh, people, I would say transition back to the civilian world, just have a, have a goal set in place. Yeah. Um, have some kind of idea of what you think you want to do when you get out. Um, and just realize it's not going to happen overnight. You're going to have to work, um, mm-hmm. do that. And I think for people who are kind of going through the same situation as me, um, is there is a, there is a light in the, the tunnel. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a long process but if you put the work in and you don't worry about the past Mm. the future will be bright for you so Mm. yeah awesome cool man well i appreciate you coming on i appreciate you sharing your story i didn't know a lot of that and so it's it was super interesting for me because you know we've got uh some kind of history (laughs) knowing you for 10 years (laughs) exactly so so it's cool to uh, paint that picture behind the hat so yeah man and um like i said um i appreciate you letting me on at the end of the day um and my wife let me, and I told her, I was like, this is really cool. Like, they were, I, and I, I do like interacting with you guys again, because I like to see how you guys have, have progressed. Because at the end of the day, I know it sounds kind of weird, like my children, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I, hopefully I was able to mentor all the recruits that I had in some sort of way or impacted their lives in some sort of way. So yeah, it's yeah. cool to see where you guys are at, man. Absolutely. So. Yeah, I mean, you know, you'll be, uh, you and the ideas will be burning in my brain for a probably of it. <laughs> the rest of my yeah, life, i so. remember mine from 15 years ago man so yeah, crazy it's, uh you always will do so awesome. and if you ever need anything let me know for real tell the guys to they need anything for me i'm pretty easy dude to talk to i think so yeah absolutely no it's been fun and uh hopefully one day i'll make it down to your crossfit gym i'm not a crossfit athlete i don't like actually do crossfit um <laughs> Because it, it, it just kills me. I don't, I don't know. It's but, rough, man, but it's <laughs> uh, it's kept me ch- able to chase around my daughter. So if I can do that. Go. That's important. So. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate the time and uh, yep. best of luck. And I look forward to seeing you know your next awards. You guys, uh, you, you get the guard. Try to do something every time, man. Kill I appreciate it, brother. Thanks, man. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode with, with Corey. Like I said, awesome story. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And, you know, it's I, I feel for him going through that. So. Um, you know, if you guys are in Beaufort, go check out his CrossFit gym, Humidity CrossFit, and uh, go support him. But I hope you guys enjoyed that episode, enjoyed that conversation, and I will see you guys next week.